Please turn in your Bibles to 2 Chronicles chapter 25. We're going to read together the whole chapter this morning, and it's an important reading. Um, this is a chapter that the Lord has spoken to me through at a particular time, and I want this morning to bring a message from it, which, although I don't know your hearts, perhaps there's someone this morning who needs to hear this, and certainly it could be a word of prevention to all of us because the title of the message is The Danger of a Divided Heart. The Danger of a Divided Heart. And that's something that we can all sink into, a condition of having a divided heart. But perhaps for some, you are in that position this morning. So I pray the Lord will speak to all of us. Uh, it's a word of challenge for me and certainly for every Christian. So let's read Second Chronicles chapter 25, beginning at verse 1. Amaziah was twenty and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jehoadan of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. Now it came to pass when the kingdom was established to him that he slew his servants that had killed the king his father. But he slew not their children, but did as it is written in the, book of, in the law in the book of Moses, where the Lord commanded, saying, The fathers shall not die for the children, neither shall the children die for the fathers, but every man shall die for his own sin. Moreover, Amaziah gathered Judah together and made them captains over thousands and captains over hundreds, according to the houses of their fathers, throughout all Judah and Benjamin. And he numbered them from twenty years old and above, and found them three hundred thousand choice men, able to go forth to war, that could handle spear and shield. He hired also an hundred thousand mighty men of valor out of Israel for an hundred talents of silver. But there came a man of God to him, saying, O king, let not the army of Israel go with thee, for the Lord is not with Israel, to wit, with all the children of Ephraim. But if thou wilt go, do it, be strong for the battle, God shall make thee fall before the enemy, for God hath power to help and to cast down. And Amaziah said to the man of God, But what shall we do for the hundred talents which I have given to the army of Israel? And the man of God answered, The Lord is able to give thee much more than this. Then Amaziah separated them, to wit, the army that was come to him out of Ephraim, to go home again. Wherefore their anger was greatly kindled against Judah, and they returned home in great anger. And Amaziah strengthened himself and led forth his people, and went to the valley of salt, and smote of the children of Seir ten thousand. And other ten thousand left alive did the children of Judah carry away captive, and brought them unto the top of the rock, and cast them down from the top of the rock, that they were all broken in pieces. But the soldiers of the army, which Amaziah sent back, that they should not go with him to battle, fell upon the cities of Judah, from Samaria even unto Beth Horon, and smote three thousand of them, and took much spoil." Now it came to pass that after Amaziah was come from the slaughter of the Edomites, that he brought the gods of the children of Seir, and set them up to be his gods, and bowed down himself before them, and burned incense unto them. Wherefore the anger of the Lord was kindled against Amaziah, and he sent unto him a prophet, which said unto him, Why hast thou sought after the gods of the people, which could not deliver their own people out of thine hand? And it came to pass, as he talked with him, that the king said unto him, Art thou made of the king's counsel? Forbear, why shouldst thou be smitten? Then the prophet forbear and said, I know that God hath determined to destroy thee, because thou hast done this, and hast not hearkened unto my counsel. Then Amaziah king of Judah took advice and sent to Joash, the son of Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, king of Israel, saying, Come, let us see one another in the face. And Joash king of Israel sent to Amaziah king of Judah, saying, The thistle that was in Lebanon sent to the cedar that was in Lebanon, saying, Give thy daughter to my son to wife. And there passed by a wild beast that was in Lebanon and trod down the thistle. Thou sayest, Lo, thou hast smitten the Edomites, and thine heart lifteth thee up to boast. Abide now at home. Why shouldst thou meddle to thine hurt, that thou shouldest fall, even thou and Judah with thee? But Amaziah would not hear. For it came of God that he might deliver them into the hand of their enemies, because they sought after the gods of Edom. 
So Joash the king of Israel went up, and they saw one another in the face. And that means that they met each other with the purpose of fighting. Both he and Amaziah king of Judah at Beth Shemesh, which belongeth to Judah. And Judah was put to the worst before Israel, and they fled every man to his tent. And Joash the king of Israel took Amaziah king of Judah, the son of Joash, the son of Jehoahaz, at Beth Shemesh, and brought him to Jerusalem, and break down the wall of Jerusalem from the gate of Ephraim to the corner gate, 400 cubits. And he took all the gold and the silver and all the vessels that were found in the house of God with Obed-Edom and the treasures of the king's house, the hostages also, and returned to Samaria. And Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, lived after the death of Joash, son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel, 15 years. Now the rest of the acts of Amaziah, first and last, behold, are they not written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel? Now after the time that Amaziah did turn away from following the Lord, they made a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachish. But they sent to Lachish after him and slew him there. And they brought him upon horses and buried him with his fathers in the city of Judah. Amen. May God bless the reading of this word to our hearts. Let's just briefly bow in prayer. I want to ask the Lord for his help now as we come to preach the word. Father in heaven, we bow ourselves before you. We confess once again that we greatly need the help of the Holy Spirit to preach this word. Lord, we need the help of the Holy Spirit to hear it also. And so ask, we ask, Lord, that you would be with us now. Draw near to us, Lord, as we seek to draw near to you. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to begin this morning with a quotation A house divided against itself cannot stand. A house divided against itself cannot stand. These are the words of Abraham Lincoln at the beginning of a speech that he gave in June 1858. And his speech was focused upon the folly of disunity. At that time, the union of the northern states of what is now the USA opposed slavery and it was at odds against the Confederacy made up of the southern states, and they were very much in favor of slavery. It was very obvious to men such as Abraham Lincoln that a compromise, a working compromise, was completely unfeasible. And his words were wisely chosen to illustrate the folly and the hopelessness of the situation. In fact, I believe that he lifted these words straight from the pages of Holy Scripture, because if you and I were to turn to the Gospel of Mark or the Gospel of Matthew, we would find that the Lord Jesus Christ himself spoke those words. I want to just read you the verse as it's found in Matthew. Chapter 12 and verse 25 of Matthew says, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Now, the context of this, as Jesus Christ said it, would be after he had been healing those who were possessed with devils, those who were blind and dumb. He gave them healing, he gave them back their sight, and he gave them back their speech. We would read that the scribes and Pharisees, after hearing that Christ had done this, actually accused him of casting out devils by the power of Beelzebub, or the devil. And then, in order, for the, in order to illustrate what a ridiculous thing that was, Christ used these words. Every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. In in other words, how could you cast out devils by the power of the devil? I don't know if you remember from the Bible reading earlier, but in 2 Chronicles, we read about a division. Someone who did not stand as they should. And we find it in verse 2 of Amaziah. His legacy, his his description, as it's given to us by God. Verse 2 of Second Chronicles 25, And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. Now, you might not have thought so, but Amaziah was like many of us this morning. He enjoyed an upbringing in a family who knew and loved the one true God. His father was called Joash, and for the most part of his days, it says that Joash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. His mother was called Jehoadan, and that means Jehovah pleased. Not only was Amaziah identified with the people of God, but he did know the law of God and the commandments which were to be kept by God's people. Verse 2 makes that very obvious. 
but it also tells us his fatal flaw. The second part of verse 2, but not with a perfect heart. Amaziah's heart was divided. He was not fully devoted to Jehovah. He did not love the Lord with all of his heart, all of his soul, all of his strength, and all of his mind. Amaziah was like the New Testament church that we read about in Revelation chapter 3, the church at Laodicea. This group of believers who were neither cold nor hot, they didn't live up to their profession, they weren't warm, they were lukewarm, they were less than what they should have been because they weren't devoted to Christ. They were Christians in name, but not in practice. And such was Amaziah. So what I want to bring to you this morning, as I said in my introductory remarks, it is a message of challenge, and I don't know your hearts this morning. This is a message of challenge to me as much as it is to any of you. And perhaps this morning this would be a warning of prevention, that you would become like Amaziah. Perhaps it is a warning that you are like him and you must repent. So I want to show you this morning the danger of a divided heart. And first of all, we need to understand the reasons for why Amaziah's heart was divided, the reasons why his heart was divided. Let me remind you that we are looking at the case of someone who took the name of the Lord upon himself. In our day and age, he would be a professing Christian. That's the parallel. He wasn't a pagan. And we know, those of us who profess the name of Christ, how easy it is for our hearts to become lukewarm and to drift away from our God. Amaziah's heart was divided, first of all, because he did not use the means of grace. How do I know that? Well, only once in this chapter do we read of Amaziah acting in accordance with the law, and we find that in verse 3. Now, it came to pass when the kingdom was established to him that he slew the servants that had killed the king his father, but he slew not their children, but did as it is written in the law in the book of Moses. So, this is the only time in this whole chapter when we read of Amaziah acting in accordance with the written Word of God. And we have to admit that perhaps he was conforming with what his family knew to be right, something that he had been taught by the example of another. But it was what the written Word of God said, so we can't take that away. But that's the only time. There's no other time in the chapter when we read of Amaziah reading God's Word, as we would in the story of other kings of Israel, those who looked out the law law of God and set themselves to read it, to ponder it, to meditate on it, and then to obey it. That's not what we find in his story. As you know, the line of kings in Judah was usually from a father to a son, and in Amaziah's genealogy we can read about his great-grandfather Jehoshaphat, how he set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. I'm quoting there from 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Jehoshaphat pleaded with God for deliverance after setting himself to seek the Lord, and he was granted that deliverance. We also know that Amaziah's father, Joash, who is mentioned in the chapter, was very concerned with the house of God, and he spent time and resources maintaining it in a fit state for the worship of Jehovah. But nowhere in the account of Amaziah do we read of any such action. Not for himself, or for his family, or for his country, did he seek the face of God. We do know from his actions what he had an interest in. It was power and money, as would be the case with many kings. He wanted to be a stronger king, so in verse 5 we read that he carried out a military census, and he wanted to know exactly how many warriors he had, and he had 3,000, sorry, 300,000, a very considerable force. We also know from his words in verse 9 that he was concerned with the loss of finance. And so he had concern for power, and he had concern for money, but he had no real deep concern for knowing the law of God. And that's why I say that Amaziah did neglect the means of grace, and that's the first reason that we find him having a divided heart. Secondly, his heart was divided because he was self-delusional. And what I mean by that is that he was not aware of his actual spiritual condition. He was kidding himself. He was not examining himself. The Scriptures warn us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12, wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. Let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. That's what Amaziah should have done, because he thought he was fine. 
The context of Paul's warning is that he just reminded the believers in Corinth about the self-confidence of which the Jews were so guilty, Amaziah, an Israelite, a Jew. And this was a recurring theme in the life of the Israelites in the Old Testament, self-confidence that was based upon their identity as a successful nation, a nation of warriors. They were self-confident because they knew that they belonged to a nation that had been chosen by God, but yet they forsook Him. They ran after their own desires of their own hearts and the gods and the idols of the nations around them. Amaziah, too, was self-confident. He was not examining himself, and therefore he was self-delusional. That's the second reason his heart became divided. Firstly, because he neglected the means of grace, and secondly, because he was self-delusional. Turn with me, if you would, please, to Revelation chapter 3, which I referenced earlier. I want to show us some verses from that chapter. I'd like to read verses 14 through to 18 in Revelation chapter 3. Verse 14 begins, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. So verse 17, as we read it there, this is the believer who is self-deluded. I am rich and increased with goods, and have need of nothing. And how applicable that would be to Amaziah's situation. He was the king of the nation. He had no physical needs that weren't met. Anything he desired was his to take. And just like the believers in Laodicea, he thought that he had need of nothing, but he didn't know that he was wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, and that everything that he truly needed was found in his God. And that what he should have been doing was seeking out the law of his God, and there were occasions in Amaziah's life when the Lord spoke to him, but he didn't listen. And that's the third reason for his divided heart, that he failed to take instruction. And there are two occasions in this chapter when Amaziah failed to take instruction that God sent to him directly. First of all, the lesson learned when preparing for war. You know, because we've read it and because I mentioned it earlier, that he carried out a military census. Verse 5 tells us that he made captains over thousands and over hundreds. And he found that he had 300,000 soldiers, but he wanted to go to war. And he thought to himself, I don't have enough men. I don't have enough force to win this battle comfortably. So he took the money that belonged to the nation, a hundred talents of silver, and he hired mercenaries. He hired men from the neighboring kingdom of Israel. But the Lord told him that this is not something he should have done. And he gave him instruction to leave the Israelites and to go and conduct the war with only his own soldiers. Now, on this occasion, Amaziah did what the Lord told him. But the point that I'm making is that he failed to take instruction because immediately after winning the battle, we find in verse 14 that he took to himself the idols of those whom he had just conquered. And where was his heart for God then? There's absolutely no explanation for this. God was forgotten because as soon as Amaziah won the victory, I think we can safely surmise he was taken over with pride and self-confidence once again. And he took the idols of the nation whom he had defeated and he began to worship them. That's the first time he failed to heed the instruction, the direct instruction of God to him. The second time comes immediately after him falling into idolatry. In verse 16, he rejects the counsel of the prophet that was sent to him to tell him that he was sinning for seeking after the idols of this nation. And here we see Amaziah again deluding himself. I'm the king. I can do whatever I want. And so often I, I feel it's certainly true for me, and I'm sure it is for many of us this morning, we become self-confident because we feel that we've got our lives under control and that we don't need to seek the Lord for his help every day. We just get up and go about our day, and we do it in our own strength. 
believe it or not, we're committing the same folly that Amaziah was committing. Because when we go forward in our own strength and we don't seek the Lord's help, no matter what it is we're doing, we're deluding ourselves because we cannot do anything as we should in our own strength. So Amaziah's heart was divided because he neglected the means of grace, because he did not examine himself and was self-deluded, and because he failed to take instruction. And I want to show you the result of having a divided heart in the case of Amaziah. Firstly, inevitably, he fell deeper into sin. And we see a very, very sad trend throughout this chapter. First of all, his sin wasted kingdom resources. Why is that relevant to us? Well, it's because everything that you and I are given, everything that we possess, our life, our breath, our energy, our possessions, our time, it all belongs to God, and it all belongs to His kingdom. We are not our own, we were bought with a price. And Amaziah's sin wasted kingdom resources. Let's look at verse 6. He hired also an hundred thousand mighty men of valor out of Israel for an hundred talents of silver. Let's read on. But there came a man of God to him, saying, O king, let not the army of Israel go with thee, for the Lord is not with Israel, to wit with all the children of Ephraim. And let's go to verse 9. And Amaziah said to the man of God, But what shall we do for the hundred talents which I have given to the army of Israel? And the man of God answered, The Lord is able to give thee much more than this. A hundred talents, when I looked at the back of my study Bible and did some very, very quick maths, it was a sum of money which in our currency today would be in the region of 50 million pounds at least. And that may not be accurate, but it gives you a feel for how much money this man needlessly threw away because he didn't ask for the Lord's advice before he took action. If he had consulted the Word of God, if he had consulted the prophet of God, God speaks. God doesn't leave us without instruction when we ask for it. But because Amaziah failed to ask, he sinned. And he, because of his divided heart, he put himself in a situation where he had wasted an incredible sum of money, and that belonged to the nation. That could have been used for good purposes. And that is like you and I wasting our time or our energy or even our, our possessions on things which ultimately are not God's will for us to do. His sin also created opportunity for conflict. The invitation that he made to these soldiers in Israel, which he then had to go back on, means that in verse 13 we see them returning home, but they're passing through the land of Judah. And then it says in verse 13, the soldiers of the army which Amaziah sent back that they should not go with him to battle fell upon the cities of Judah from Samaria even unto Beth Horon. And look at what they did to Amaziah's own people and smote 3,000 of them and took much spoil. This had been caused entirely by Amaziah's unwise actions, which we know arose out of a divided heart. The result of his sin affected many more people than just himself. And that's still true today. When we don't walk with the Lord and we fall into sin, the effects of that sin are like ripples in a pond. It's far-reaching. It affects many more people than just ourselves. And thirdly, as he fell deeper into sin, his sin caused him to foolishly embrace foreign idols. And you and I sitting here this morning, judging the life of Amaziah as it's presented to us in Scripture, can clearly see that it was completely illogical. Even an unbeliever would say, if this man truly served Jehovah and the God of Israel, and he just defeated these people, why would he what would he possibly stand to gain by worshiping their gods who clearly couldn't protect them and had no power? But you see, believer, brother, or sister in Christ this morning, when we chase after the things of this world, when we give our hearts and our affections in a greater degree than is necessary to the things of this world. We are chasing after the idols of the ungodly. We're doing exactly what Amaziah did here, and it makes no sense. It doesn't make any sense for me to set my heart on some possession or some activity which is not the will of God for me to do. And so often we tend to do it. Now let's take the example of Amaziah and learn from his mistakes. 
when we consider that we are the children of God, why should we have anything to do with that which is clearly only of this world? As it tells us in 1 John, verse, sorry, 1 John chapter 1 and verse 6, if we say we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. And so the result of Amaziah's divided heart was that he, first of all, fell deeper into sin. But secondly, the end of this sad story is that he lost his usefulness for the Lord, and he was marked for judgment. If you go with me to verse 17, you'll see that by this point, Amaziah had blatantly rejected everything that he had ever been taught, every warning that the prophet of God had brought to him. And he had refused to listen to God's very specific revelation. And it's quite clear that he has passed the point of return. And this is confirmed by the words of the prophet in verse 16. If we go into the middle of the verse, it says, Then the prophet forbear and said, I know that God hath determined to destroy thee, because thou hast done this, and hast not hearkened unto my counsel. And as we know from the word of God, that when a person's heart is in that condition, even such a solemn word of judgment does not cause them to repent, because at that point, there's nothing more that can be done for that person. I'm not going to apply this any further. This is a truth that's way outside my depth, but it is a truth, and it's in the Word of God, that it is possible for a believer to ruin their testimony. I know that God hath determined to destroy thee. And so, looking at that, let's go straight away to the remedy for a divided heart. That's what we need to see this morning. Whether our hearts are divided in small measure or in great measure this morning, we must seek the remedy for a divided heart. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 3. I want to read verses 18 to 22 with you as we consider this final point, the remedy for a divided heart. Verse 18 says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with thy salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore. And that means to be warm. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. This is the remedy for the Laodiceans, who were lukewarm, who were not living for the Lord, who they professed to love. And this is a remedy for a divided heart. Look with me at verse 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore. The appropriate response when the Lord rebukes us through His Word or through another method, through circumstances, things that the Lord brings into our lives, the appropriate response is to be zealous, therefore, to repent, and to to repent with all of our hearts. And that is part of the thought of zealousness as well. A zealous person holds nothing back for themselves. A person holds nothing back from the Lord, but rather they turn their whole heart over to him, and he is a wholehearted believer. She is a wholehearted believer, not half-hearted, not one with a a divided heart. Now, if only Amaziah had listened to the warnings that were given to him specifically by the prophets of God. God had to send the prophets to Amaziah because Amaziah wasn't reading God's Word for himself. He had to send the prophets to Amaziah to tell him that he had fallen into sin because Amaziah failed to recognize his sinfulness himself. And if this morning the Lord is speaking to you and showing you that in some way your heart is divided and not given over to Him, then you need to listen to the Word of God. Through His Word, He rebukes and chastens because He loves you, because you are His child. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, God says. Revelation 3 shows us that even for the believer who is plagued again and again with falling victim to self-confidence, 
or to a lack of attending to the means of grace, there is, possible, uh, there is a possibility that you can find a life of overcoming. Verse 21, to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. And how is it that we can overcome? How can we avoid being like Amaziah and being self-confident, neglecting the means of grace, and even getting to the point where we would reject God's Word to us? Well, of course, we must be relying on Christ, because if you look in verse 21, it tells us that Christ also overcame. And what did He overcome? He overcame sin. He overcame the power of death and of hell. He overcame the grave. He overcame the fiercest temptations of our great enemy, the devil. Christ has overcome all things for us that we might also become overcomers through Him and in Him. And the exhortation of God's Word to us this morning is that we should hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you have been living in a way that is like that of Amaziah, in that your heart is divided and it's not wholly given over to him, God's word to you this morning is to open the door and to hear his voice so that he would come in and that you, as we see in verse 20, would have close fellowship with him. I will sup with him and he with me. Those who have divided hearts are not fellowshipping closely with the Lord. We're not enjoying that walk with God, which perhaps we once knew. I trust the Lord will speak to us this morning through this. As we come to a close, I ask that He would bless the Word to our hearts. Let's just bow in prayer. Father in heaven, we pray that we would not have divided hearts, that we would not be like this Amaziah, this king, who was given so much privilege who we believe, Lord, was one of your children because it says that he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. And yet, Lord, his legacy is contaminated by sin. He was one who did not seek after the Lord with his whole heart. Now, Lord, it's here for our learning. It's here for our benefit that we would avoid being like him. Father, I pray just for my own soul that you would help me to apply this word to my heart, that I would give myself wholly over to you, And that I wouldn't hold back a part of myself for the purpose of my selfish desires, Lord. Lord, I pray we would all be given over to you. What a life of overcoming, even in this world, would be possible and is possible, Lord. What a life of overcoming would be known by us if we were wholly given over to our God and to listening to what he would instruct us to do. Father, I just pray that you would bless the word to our hearts. Let, which, let that which is of man fall away and be forgotten. And may the word of God remain and take root and bless. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.